Uh, good morning, everyone. So, yeah, I'm Richard Davies. I'm Chief Operating Officer for Revolut. Um, 20 years ago, I was training as an economist at Cambridge University. So, given we've got a sort of more diverse audience than often I speak to, where it's pretty niche fintech, I thought I'd sort of combine the two things and talk about actually in the real world, how much are we really seeing benefit out of fintech? Are we at that point where the hype around fintech is actually translating to economic reality? I should probably add this is particularly around sort of Western markets in terms of what I talk about. You probably argue in places like China, there's been uh, already quite a lot of um, progress on, on fintech with the likes of uh, Alipay and WeChat kind of a few years earlier. So if I start with um, the problem, so this is a UK example, but you could use it for many uh, countries, actually, in developed markets. Um, so you saw over half a century of pretty constant progress in economic growth, in productivity, which sort of stopped with the last financial crisis. We've had a, I guess, structural problem for the last 10 years in many countries. We talked about the crypto winter earlier, and I guess there are definitely some storm clouds gathering in the real world economy right now as well. And so there's a pretty interesting um, problem if we've got a, an issue already, we've got kind of storm clouds gathering, sort of what, what happens, where's the rays of light? So FinTech, for those of you um, sort of not so into the, the scene and the hype, uh, this is a chart often shown of a, a bank's website, I won't name which one, with uh, startup uh, FinTech um, brand names put against it in terms of the categories of the value chain of that bank they are disrupting. So this is a US example, you've got people like Chime who are doing uh, prepaid cards, you've got people like, um, what have we got over here, uh, various people in loans up here, uh, various people in savings investments. So you've got a wide range of, of fintechs basically disrupting all parts of what banks have historically done. And I'm going to particularly talk about that element, the, the elements of fintechs that are providing services directly to customers, be they consumers or be they businesses. But there are also fintechs supplying uh, to incumbent banks, but I think particularly relevant for this conversation is people actually going direct to customer. Revolut, can I just ask, who's got a Revolut card in the room? I'm hoping for a few. Got a, maybe 10%. Um, that's nice to see. Uh, the rest of you, please see me afterwards. I'll, uh, I'll sign you up. Um, so a quick introduction. Um, we, we're basically on a mission to create a global financial platform to change financial services, to help make it much easier to use and manage your money. If you look at this, you've got the left-hand side here, the sort of core basics of a, what you expect out of a, a digital app nowadays with um, easy display of your current balances, what transactions you've got, uh, budgeting, these sort of things. Lots of people have that. Um, this probably has been our biggest USP over the last few years. Multi-currency, cross-border payments, and FX. So we allow you to hold many different currencies simultaneously in your wallet, and we have extremely great value rates in terms of FX, uh, cross-border payments, car payments, and so on, which is a problem that very few people have solved historically. And then, I guess, expanding beyond that um, to the platform point, on the right-hand side, you've got uh, a, a wide range of additional products and services. So, for example, crypto, we, we help facilitate people to uh, trade crypto, topical for today. We also help facilitate savings investments. So we launched pretty recently a commission-free trading service in Europe. Um, and we also provide, for example, access to credit and our insurance products. So a pretty wide range of, of services, and we're, we're adding to those literally sort of month by month as we go. So enough about Revolut. Um, more widely on fintech, this topic of how does fintech create economic benefit. I'd argue there's sort of three main things and a fourth one that's perhaps more um, debatable. So first of all, cheaper. There are significant transaction costs in financial services. And that's, I guess, one of the biggest reasons we see for people taking us is we're providing much greater customer value than is historically provided by the incumbent banks. 
for example, on cross-border payments. So you know, reducing transaction costs, giving customers more back out of their money to be able to use that money for productive purposes. And there's a report done by EY that looks at fintech adoption. In that report, it says, why are people using fintech? So biggest single reason, it's cheaper. 27% of people use it because it's cheaper. Then more efficient. So uses less of your time. It takes less time to set up or to actually get done what you need to get done once you set it up, it's quicker and easier. So yeah, giving back people time to use that time productively. Again, you can see significant potential to people saying that's why they use FinTech. Then new products and services. So I mentioned around lending, I mentioned around savings and investments, and widening access to those asset classes is important. Widening access to small business finance helps small businesses to invest and grow which helps economic growth. Widening access to investment across the population helps, again, to fuel economic growth because that's investment back into companies to, to grow. The fourth one, perhaps debatable, hence the question mark, is, is job creation. So Revolut right now is probably hiring about 200 people per month. Good job creation. You might argue, hence the question mark, that there are jobs also coming out of the incumbent uh, banks, which possibly offsets that. But then how do these benefits actually get out there? Um, I think there's two ways of doing that. One is direct, so people actually adopting Revolut or other fintechs and getting those benefits directly. Or secondly, you get enough adoption that the incumbents start to react. They're worried enough that they wake up, they start to actually invest significantly, they sharpen up pricing, etc. So you can spread the benefits two ways. So I thought a little look back to another example of adoption curve would be interesting and some foundations of how actually we've got fintech today. So mobile phones. And this is a pretty typical adoption curve. You can see a pretty shallow initial period, followed by a real strong period where you've got four or five years of moving from minority using to significant majority using. And I'd argue that fintech's really right now in that period. I mean, this is the first phase of mobile phones. Um, you can see actually mobile phones were pretty ubiquitous, even by 2000. You clearly had a second wave with the smartphones, similar looking adoption curve, and actually smartphones have been one of the key bases for actual fintech adoption today, because people like Revolut very much are based off smartphone apps. If you look then again at global adoption uh, of fintech, you can see this point. It's, it's, we're in this like four or five year period. There was an adoption of 15%, 2015, it's now up to 60, 70% with the UK a bit ahead of the global average. Though it is fair to say the small business adoption is, is lagging consumer adoption. It's also fair to say there's quite a variance in terms of what services are being adopting. And payments here includes money transfers, FX, uh, domestic payments, international payments, quite a broad church. So there is definitely still a lot of room to get to much wider adoption here. But that trend is, is, is very powerful. And something we have definitely seen directly ourselves. So if you look at our own customer base and our customer adoption, um, Rakesh mentioned at the start, we, we're now, actually now about 7.5 million customers. Um, so you can see that real acceleration in the, the rate of customer acquisition. Um, we, we at, the end of, at the start of September, we're 7 million customers. Today, we're over 7.5 million customers. 12 months ago, we were at 2.5 million customers. So kind of vertical takeoff point in terms of customer base, which uh, is a lot of fun and uh, quite challenging as well. Um, but I, I think we've read definitely that point of mass adoption is here. We're in that point. So the incumbents reacting. I mentioned the indirect spreading of um, benefits of fintech to economy. Again, I think there's lots of evidence of that. So I've pointed here to a number of uh, press articles, uh, bank websites, to show, show that point. You've got, uh, for example, Barclays launched a one-hour digital SME loan capability. RBS has launched a uh, payments digital SME bank. In Hong Kong, HPC has been cutting fees to respond to tech entrants. And then you've got sort of feature copying like freeze cards, uh, people like Barclays, people like Halifax, for features that have been around for a while and in the likes of Monzo and Revolut. So there's definitely that sort of spread of uh, indirect benefit that the incumbents have been, I think, reacting now for certainly a couple of years on to try and make sure they are able to, to stay competitive in the market. 
So if I sort of wrap things then back together to this topic of where are we? Are we actually going to see real economic benefit from fintechs and these kind of storm clouds, um, the, the possible winter that's gathering? So I think it's definitely fair to say that adoption has reached mainstream now. And we are in that sort of vertical takeoff user growth phase now for quite a number of uh, fintechs that have sort of reached that, that critical mass. I think alongside that in fintech, we are now sort of entering a second phase where you really will need scale to succeed unless you are in a very focused niche. And so already there's a number of fintechs you can see actually dropping out of the market the last few months. And I think that phase will continue as a few companies build truly global scale of user base. The incumbents definitely have woken up that they, uh, they're responding where they can. I personally argue, having been both sides, that with sort of legacy tech stacks, with legacy p &L, you, you it's very hard to respond fully. But nonetheless, I think the, the incumbent response will see translation of economic benefit also to, to the full customer base out there in the market. And so I'm personally actually really optimistic that we have hit this inflection point where fintech is sort of out of a, a bubble in Shoreditch and Silicon Valley and wherever, and actually now properly into real-world adoption, both directly, indirectly, and creating those benefits of cheaper, more efficient, wider access to lending and savings. And therefore, we have got storm clouds gathering with be it Brexit in Europe, be it trade tensions, be it natural end of economic cycle, but hopefully there are definitely some rays of light from FinTech in terms of helping keep the economy prospering. Thank you.